what is up you guys and welcome to your january 2022 sign readings and happy new year can you freaking believe it we made it to 2022 i do just want to say before we start that i really really appreciate your all's support in the year of 2021 i really really do and i'm really happy to be continuing this journey with you guys comment down below if you've been here for a while or if you've watched quite a few of my videos and let me know which video your favorite video was. This is your signs horoscope for January 2022 and also a little bit of tarot mixed in there for each sign as well. You can find your timestamps down below. Okay, really quick, future me here. Well, I don't know, past me when you're watching this, but I forgot to mention that I did the 2022 horoscopes for your sign. So definitely make sure that you watch that video and also make sure that you comment on this video, like this video and share this video. It helps me out a ton and I would really, really appreciate it, you guys. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy your reading. Alrighty, Capricorn, starting with you. This is your January 2022 tarot and astrology reading. And January is a month where it's basically like time to fucking work, you know? It is like boss bitch, let's work bitch kind of energy basically especially towards the end of the month but you may be feeling some of that energy already although you are like reflecting a lot on your values and what's important to you in regards to how you show up in the world your identity what you wear your appearance how you put yourself out there and just really reflecting on you in general and your appearances and, and what's important to you and what you value. That is definitely continuing for the month of January where you are really revisiting things in terms of where you find value, where you find comfort and also lessons of self-worth and relations and connection with others. And so that is something that's like gonna be continuing for you that started in December, but that's gonna be continuing basically like almost the whole month of January until Venus goes direct on January 29th. But on the second, we have the new moon in your sign, which is definitely going to indicate you starting some kind of new cycle with you. So that is a time where you could really start feeling like right when we start January, you could really start feeling like, okay, like you're getting somewhat of an idea of like this new you that's being born with these all these lessons that you've learned. And I also feel like January is a month Capricorn where you are really seeing just how much you've changed over like this last really decade um honestly like even a little bit more than a decade like probably like 11 or 12 years since like 2008 when Pluto entered your sign because a lot of this retrograde energy that's happening is kind of dancing around Pluto in your sign and so this is a time of really deep and intense reflection where you are just seeing how much you've changed and I also feel like Capricorn with this new moon in your sign it's kind of like just a reflection of that it's kind of like a realization or a moment of clarity of like oh okay and it's kind of bringing in this new energy where it's like you've done the reflection part and although you're still going to be reflecting a lot of january that new moon at the very beginning of the month is like oh okay like you're you're kind of at that halfway point almost like you're kind of starting to see certain things and you're starting to be able to kind of grasp and understand these certain some certain lessons that you've been learning lately to do with yourself. And so that's really how I see the beginning of your month going. And then towards like the middle of the month, Mercury is going to retrograde in your second house and with right on your ruling planet of Saturn. So this is like a really big deal. This is going to be a time where you are really reflecting on what's necessary like what's a necessity to you what's important your priorities your finances your assets and what you keep close to you in general like what you prioritize is going to be a very big deal with this mercury retrograde and it's going to be a time where you're reassessing what you're investing your time money energy etc into like what are you investing into and in multiple different avenues and what are you prioritizing and so with that mercury retrograde happening around the 14th on your ruling planet it's going to be a time of like buckling down or reevaluating where you may need to buckle down on finances it's it, it may feel kind of like 
okay like this is a time of like growing the fuck up in terms of money or in terms of assets in terms of what i'm prioritizing or in terms of what's important what's a necessity and so that is i think what you're really going to notice with the, that mercury retrograde starting in your second house and I also feel like towards the middle of the month around that Cancer full moon, there's going to be a reflecting on relations and relationships and what it is that's important to you within relationships. And there may be for some Capricorn risings, at least, this may be kind of like a time of letting go of certain relationships or where you've noticed certain betrayals within relationships or where you've noticed certain old toxic behaviors, toxic patterns, or scandalous behaviors, even with yourself, or resentments coming up to do with relationships or significant people within your life have kind of mirrored that within you in some way. And so that Cancer full moon mid-month, I think for you Capricorn, is going to be a time of really seeing that and maybe like either readjusting or reconnecting within your relationships or letting go in some way. That full moon really indicates a focus on relationships for you. And I see that in your cards here as well. And like the really big, <laughs> the really big banger of the month is the nodes moving into Scorpio and Taurus on the 18th. So right, uh, right after that full moon, basically, you're gonna start noticing a massive shift in terms of what you're focusing on and what's important to you. And that is going to be more of on your social life. Like the South Node is going to move into Scorpio. And so there's going to be a certain kind of like complexity and chaos that you start noticing within your social life or even power struggles. And that's the shadow side of it. It may not all be like doom and gloom. And so I don't want to like give that vibe here um but a lot of it is going to be healing in regards to networking connections friendships social relationships and really pulling out like old behaviors or old patterns in terms of those things it's like you're wanting to kind of get out of the chaos of the world and networking and connections and friends and alliances you may be drawn to that at first though but eventually you're going to want to get out of that and really simplify things and focus more on what's important to you in terms of what actually makes you feel good, what you actually enjoy, and what actually like feels good to you and feels pleasurable to you. Or even like children, if you have children or want children, um, or love and romance also could be kind of like a big thing that comes up for you. So that's something else that you could notice for the next 18 months after uh, the 18th of January. That's going to be a really big long-term cycle for you. And I talked more about that in your 2022 horoscope, which is now up. So go check that out if you haven't seen it. And then towards the end of the month uh, with Mars moving into your sign is really the time of like boss up work kind of energy. It's like, okay, yeah, like we are getting shit done. We are focused. It's time to go. Like Mars moving in your sign is going to be like, it is time to assert yourself. It is time to take action. It is time to initiate. It is time to do all the things that you've been wanting to do. And Venus is going to go direct like literally five days later on the 29th. And so after that, it's just going to be on. You're just going to be like, okay, I'm fucking moving forward. I'm, I'm done reflecting. I'm done going back. I'm moving forward now. But then Mercury is going to retrograde back in your sign on the 25th of January. And yeah, that is going to be a time where you are once again, kind of making sense of a lot of the things that you were reflecting on, like the reflection energy is going to come back a little bit, not for too long, but it's going to be a time where you're kind of making sense of what you've reflected on and really like understanding it on a mental level, putting the puzzle pieces together on all the lessons that you've learned in the last few months. And so that is what I think that that's going to be about. Uh, it may be a time where you change your mind about something or you're making a decision about something or you're reflecting deeply on something or you need to have some kind of deep conversation or communicate something um, that you feel very deeply about. But it's going to be, I, I also see Capricorn in January that you could be getting very deeply passionate about something um, that you could be almost kind of like ready to fight for like what you believe in or ready to assert yourself over things that you feel very strongly about like I think that it may be a time where you're asserting your opinion a little bit more especially towards the very end of the month and maybe even into the beginning of February 
But um, yeah, so that is your astrology for January. Let's go ahead and get into your cards. So uh, for your Oracle cards, we have the spirit of the pentacle, faith, unity, and wholeness. This makes a lot of sense with Jupiter in your third house now. It's like mentally, you may just be feeling a lot lighter. Like you may be feeling like there's just a whole new vibe in the air where you are feeling a little bit more maybe connected to your environment or aware of what's going on around you or wanting to expand in some way in terms of what's close to you, near you, siblings, relatives, what you do on like a day-to-day -day basis. You just may be feeling more inspired and more connected and have a little bit more faith and want to unify with, you know, people around you a little bit more. And then we also have spirit of stone, frozen, delayed longing. And so I feel like these are two kind of opposite energies that you may be feeling in the month where you have this like, th this new kind of energy of like wanting to connect, wanting to, you know, mingle a little bit more and feeling more connected and more aware of your environment and what's going on around you. But at the same time, there is this energy of like really, needing to work or really needing to kind of like get shit done like be in boss mode you know like really just you know working and just doing the damn thing and so you may be a little bit caught between like oh I want to like mingle and like feel good and do things that feel good and like go to a spa or go do go to a yoga class or like whatever, like mingle within my environment, my city, my town, whatever, or the people that are in my environment. But there's also kind of like, okay, no, like we got shit to do. We can't worry about that right now. And so that's like kind of an energy that I see that you could be feeling in the month of January. You may feel a little bit like held back as well, like delayed with that Venus retrograde in your sign or feel like you're not able to take action, especially with Mars in your 12th for like the first half of the month. You may be feeling a little bit like less motivated or a little bit like just delayed, set back, like wanting to sleep more, running to rest more. And so that that may not be like relevant for you. Like the work energy, getting shit done energy may not be more relevant to, for you until like the very end of the month. So do keep that in mind. And then we also have the Ace of Pentacles and the Seven of Swords. I thought this was really interesting. So I would watch out to some degree this month with your money, your finances, your, you know, possessions, the things of value in your life. Like this could definitely be a time where you are, there, there's something going on here that could be shady or that could just be like a, a decrease in something like, um, or I mean, for some people, it could be you where you're wanting to take some kind of risk that could blow back on you. The seven of swords, I mean, can quite literally be like theft, something like that. So you do want to watch out for that. For some of you, like, I don't, it could be something simple as like a scam or something like that. So just watch out for that in the month of January because that energy may be there. Some of you may be feeling a little bit betrayed as well. And, and so it's really kind of like, figuring out what's important, what's a necessity, and like moving forward with that. Also figuring out who's important and who's a necessity, right? And I feel like you're really reflecting on possible relations this month, Capricorn, or for some, it could be some kind of big decision or big like fork in the road where you're really, you're thinking about the future, you're thinking about the long-term and who fits in your life long-term, like who's gonna be worth it to keep in your life and who isn't, like who's maybe just taking from you or who is bringing your vibe down or who are you having trouble seeing in your future long-term or building something now with them long-term. And then with that, you're going to, I feel like this month is a month where you're kind of like, you're seeing the future in a new way and you're moving forward because we start off with the two of wands and then the lovers and then end with the three of wands. And so after that, it's gonna be a time of moving forward, looking towards the future, looking towards the big picture. So I feel like whatever decision you make, it's gonna be different for different ones of you. I feel like you are making it and taking action on it likely this month, okay? If it deals with a relationship or just some really big decision in your life, okay? So that is what I'm getting for you, Capricorn. Definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating or if you could see it resonating. I would really love to hear your feedback as always. It really helps me out. Uh, let me know if you made it through the whole reading and yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye
What's up Aquarius? Welcome to your January 2022 tarot and astrology horoscope for this coming month. So Aquarius, I really see here for you that in the month of January, you are going to be going through a lot of really intense healing. And healing is not always easy. So when I say that, it's not like, oh, kumbaya, I'm sitting on top of the mountaintop and just this whoosh of energy flows through me and everything is better. Like, no, healing is hard work. And I feel like you, you know that, right? You got Capricorn in your 12th house. Like you got to do the work to get there, right? And it's not always easy. It's not always just kumbaya I'm on top of a mountain and like everything's great right it really is like putting in the practical things uh the the grounded practical things to get there and it can be hard at times and so with us moving into January 22 we have a lot going on in your 12th house Venus is retrograde here she's been retrograde here since last month of December 2021 so you're going to be experiencing a lot of healing this is going to be reflecting a lot on the past reflecting a lot on time we have the spirit of time here for your oracle card illusion endless waiting and so i feel like this is definitely a time where you are reflecting on things from the past a lot or there is a lot of themes from the past resurfacing for you or you are reflecting on you know things that maybe you felt you missed out on or you're reflecting on um things that need to be healed, purged, let go of, surrendered to, etc. And so those are some of the themes that you could see coming up very, very prevalent in January. We also have a new moon at the very beginning of January. And so this is going to be a time of once again, bringing that focus of your 12th house, healing, letting go, you know, also self-sabotaging behaviors. The 12th house is of self-undoing where you unravel or where certain behaviors can kind of cause you to unravel, where you have bad subconscious patterns or habits. And so it's really reflecting on these things so you can heal these things in January. After that, uh, we have Mercury retrograding in your sign middle of the month. And so that's going to be a time of really reflecting on yourself and certain patterns that maybe are going on behind the scenes or certain things going on behind the scenes or subconsciously that you really want to change or that you're needing to kind of go back and redo or reflect on. So it's really going to be kind of like an intense time of, of focusing on you and what you need to let go of and what needs to be purged from your life. It could also be a time of endings for that reason. Mars is going to be moving into Capricorn uh, at the end of the month on the 24th. So that's going to add another layer of this 12th house energy that's like really becoming a really big focus for you especially in the first couple months of 2022 so with mars moving in there even more so you're going to be reflecting on these patterns where you kind of have the tendency to self-destruct or things that need to end things that need to be cut away but we also have the nodes moving into taurus and scorpio this month which is a big deal it's an 18 month cycle so they'll be there for the next 18 months they'll be having eclipses there and this is your fourth and tenth house aquarius and so with the south node moving into your tenth house it's really going to bring up power dynamics within your career, the world of 40 figures, and where you may need to let go of certain things or certain attachments regarding those themes as well. And the North Node in your fourth house is on and off. It's going to be uncomfortable, but also desired for you to live a more simplistic life, to have a more simplistic lifestyle, a more simplistic home life, something more valuable or something more steady or sturdy within the home or within the family you're going to want to like break free of old ways of doing things uh within home and family or old ways of thinking within home and family and so there's going to be you're going to be kind of drawn between the chaos and complexity of the big picture or what's going on in the world versus wanting to kind of live a more simplistic life or a more valuable life in terms of home and family of a more simplistic personal life and so this kind of duality between your public life versus your personal life and your private life are going to become really big starting in the month of january after the 18th so do remember that and then we have 
Venus moving direct on the 29th. And so that's going to be finally a time where there's some kind of forward momentum. Mercury is going to be retrograding back into your 12th though at that time. So there will still be somewhat of a reflection and making sense of everything that you know, you've been learning and that you've been kind of changing over these, you know, over the month. But for the most part, I think, you know, moving into February, you're really going to start seeing more of a forward momentum where you can start implementing the healing and the lessons that you've learned. So anyways, we also have the spirit of connections here. And so I feel like connections could be a really big deal where you could be reflecting a lot on your relationships or connections in your life. Uh, you could be really kind of feeling like there are certain connections that maybe are ending or certain connections that you're reflecting on from the past or old connections that are coming back around or certain beliefs about connections in general uh, that could be coming up here for you. So let's go ahead and start your actual tarot cards here. We have justice reversed, and I feel like this is really kind of hinting towards something that you feel was unfair or that you feel was not uh, done right in the past, something that really has like bothered you or some kind of lack of, or some kind of denial of truth that could be going on here, Aquarius. And then we also have the Three of Swords and the nine of swords coming up here. And so some of you guys could be experiencing some sleepless nights, some feelings of betrayal, some feelings of something not being fair, or some feelings of just being hurt, you know, whether it's from something in the past or from something recently, there's just something here that I feel like you're really needing to reflect on. I also feel like Aquarius, for some of you, you could be reflecting on your habits, addictions, etc. Like things that you've been getting into that are somehow self-destructive. I also see with the Page of Pentacles here and the Eight of Swords that there could be some insecurities that are coming up regarding money or finances that you are also needing to address here. Okay, so definitely a lot going on here. But then we get to the Hermit, which makes a lot of sense because of all these 12th house placements. The 12th house is literally Hermit mode. It is where you're feeling more secluded, more isolated, more pulled away from society. And so with the Hermit here, I feel like you're really kind of on your own or you're feeling a little bit more like singular this month. You're feeling a little bit more secluded or more isolated whether out of your choice or whether or not like maybe something happened and you're just feeling that way but either way you are definitely reflecting on things that have been going on more behind the scenes that need to be addressed that you can't ignore or put off anymore okay and then we have this star which is beautiful because i believe that the star here is really kind of like the light at the end of the tunnel you're starting to feel that sense of healing that sense of refreshing and we also have judgment to finish it off so it's like you're finally kind of coming to your reckoning moment it's like okay like i need to face these skeletons from the past i need to address them right i need to stop living in this constant vicious circle or constantly putting things off like i need to face whatever it is that i've been avoiding and that's where your true healing comes from where you start being able to kind of get a sense of like oh i went through those things for a reason and this kind of reflection on time starts becoming apparent and you really start coming to this new way of seeing things and this new awakening that possibly changes your outlook that possibly changes your belief systems uh so that is what i'm seeing here for you in the month of january aquarius definitely let me know down below if this resonates or if you could see this resonating for you i would really love to hear about it thank you guys so so much for watching watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Hi Pisces. Welcome to your January 2022 horoscope and tarot reading. So Pisces, January for you, like first off, Jupiter is in your sign and Jupiter is your ruling planet. So this is like so, so good for you. You're probably feeling like more like yourself starting 2022. It's like a breath of fresh air. You're probably feeling lighter. You're probably like, oh my gosh, you know, with Jupiter moving through your 12th house, it's been a really heavy time and you've had Saturn there as well. So it's been kind of a time where you've maybe felt like it's just been a constant dwelling 
on the past or on things that were subconscious shit that can feel very like dark and isolating at times it's been a time of dealing with mental health issues or a time of really going into the depths of your mind and figuring out what you're holding on to and what you need to let go of. So with Jupiter now moving into your sign for the first full month, you're starting out the, the year just with this really refreshing feeling of like, finally, you know, like I, I feel more like myself again. Like I'm, I'm not constantly stuck in the past or trapped in the past or trapped in like constantly endings and letting go and isolation and seclusion and detaching like it's probably been a time where you've like really kind of detached and i feel like this month you could start feeling a little bit more social again with venus retrograding in your 11th and a new moon in your 11th mars moving into your 11th at the end of the month like you are going to be feeling a lot more social and you're going to be starting to pay a little bit more attention to what's going on outside of you and what's going on with others it's like a, a breath of fresh air it's like a refreshment it's like it is just like feeling like yourself again and feeling more open-minded and just more like you. And we have the spirit of the child here really kind of validating that. And it says innocent, immature, adventurous. And so I feel like this is a time where you're just feeling more faithful, you are feeling more hopeful, more optimistic, and possibly even more childlike. You know, you're just feeling more open, like, okay. I can finally float now instead of constantly feeling like I'm sinking or getting pulled down by the anchor, you know? And we also have the spirit of the dwelling place, home structure and foundation. So I feel like once again, you've been kind of dwelling on the past or on just, you know, you've just been kind of possibly in a dark place, especially if you're a Pisces rising more so, where it's just been possibly like an isolated time or you've been feeling kind of like an outcast or like no one understands. And so it, it may have been kind of hard. That's kind of what I'm seeing here for you. And we also have the tower and I more so see this as finally breaking free because after that we have the ace of cups and the queen of cups and it's like you're finally breaking free of something you're finally going through that break for, through and feeling more uplifted feeling more light feeling more in tune with who you are your emotions your internal world it may feel like the doors are opening for you emotionally or you're starting to see more of your potential or you're starting to see more of an opportunity in something uh in the month of january and then we even have the devil reversed which also tells me you are breaking free from old habits old kind of like cycles that you've been stuck in or reflecting on for what may feel like a really long time like your jupiter is getting away from saturn therefore and jupiter is your ruling planet therefore you are feeling free you are feeling more open you are feeling finally like you're like you've been liberated and then we also have the strength card and so it's like you have changed a lot over the last year or two you've possibly you know it's taken a lot of confidence courage and strength for you to break free and so i feel like you should celebrate yourself right now pisces like i feel like we should all be giving you a hand right now because it has not been easy for you right and i said that uh in my i believe my 2021 year ahead horoscopes and i think in my 2020 horoscopes like, and I know a lot of Pisces risings, like, we're not happy about some of my predictions for you guys, but I knew, like, it was not going to be easy. It was going to be kind of hard for you guys. And so you guys need to give yourself a fucking hand, okay? You need to, like, enjoy and savor this moment, okay? Like, this is a time where, like, you have reached a major milestone here and you are not the same person that you were and you have gained so much strength and courage and confidence and the crazy part about it is is that you've done it all possibly in silence without even saying anything to anyone. You know, with all that 12th house energy, it's like you've done all a lot of this behind the scenes internally you know, where no one really saw, you know, or where you didn't really maybe reach out for help or you didn't really tell anyone about it. Like you've been suffering silently likely for a while. And this is a time where it's kind of like you're, you're coming out of that. The doors are opening. 
the the chains are breaking and you're like wow i've learned so much and you're just starting to feel more you again it's like you're returning but you're not even the same you you know it's like you're you've upgraded <laughs> it's like an upgraded version of who you are and so i feel like this is awesome pisces um so back to your astrology, just to give you guys some dates here. We start off the month with a Capricorn new moon on the second. This is in your 11th house. So this is going to be bringing up friends, alliances, networking, you know, your social life, how you connect with other people in the world that it's going to be some kind of new start in that area. Also your ambitions, your future, what you see for yourself moving forward. So that's going to be really big. And then on the 14th, um, we will have Mercury going retrograde in your 12th house on Saturn. And so that may be kind of like a reflection period of a lot of the things that you've been learning over the last year with Mercury on Saturn, where it may be a time of really reflecting on subconscious things, habits, cycles, patterns, self-destructive uh, habits that have been holding you back or things from the past that have been holding you back that need to be let go of. You could also be really reflecting on certain people in your life and the people that you want into your life and how that is important to you in some way. And then on the 17th, we have the Cancer full moon happening in your fifth house. And so this could be a time where you're really reconnecting with what gives you comfort, emotional security, joy, happiness, pleasure, children could come up here. It could be a pretty uh, fertile time. So you do just want to be careful of that. And then on the 18th, the nodes are going to be moving into Taurus and Scorpio, which is your third and eight or your third and ninth house. Sorry. And so that's going to be, that's going to start a major cycle. I talked a lot about this in your 2022 predictions. So if you didn't see the video where I gave predictions for each sign, go watch that because I went into a lot more detail, but it's going to be a time where you're wanting to break free uh, regarding your belief systems and your surroundings, your environment. And so you may be very caught up in the complexity of what's going on in the world or world issues or uh, belief systems, etc. like the bigger picture and all the chaos of it all. But you may more so yearn for something more simplistic, something more uh, grounded and something that brings more quality and value to the table like what may be going on outside of you or what you may be seeing going on outside of you may not be the same as in your environment and so it's going to be kind of a time of really sinking like what's going on in the bigger picture versus what's going on right here right now and finding some kind of balance with that for the next 18 months until like mid 2023. Then on the 24th, we have Mars moving into Capricorn, which is going to intensify that focus on your ambitions, your long-term goals, what you want for your future, your friends, your social life, acquaintances, networking, and basically what you need to do to get to where you want to go. So it's going to be a time where you're really focused and possibly feeling more motivated. On the 29th, we have Venus finally moving direct and no longer retrograding in your 11th house of friends, alliances, networking, your goals, ambitions, etc. that I just named off. And so that is going to be a time where you are going to be like seeing a lot of forward momentum with those things. So that is what I see for you in January, Pisces. Definitely let me know down below if this reading resonated with you. I would really love to hear your feedback um, as always and let me know how your January goes. So thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up Aries? Welcome to your January 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. Let's go ahead and get into it. So Aries, January for you, I see is you moving into the year really addressing a lot in terms of your external world, what you want for your future, your vision of the future, your career, authority figures, what you're moving towards, the direction you're going in, and also certain social situations or certain people within your life, certain allies or networking or connections or whatever. It's like it's a time of really figuring out what direction you want to go in, what you want, and possibly even dealing with certain power struggles, dealing with power struggles within authority figures or within your career or within friend groups or social situations. For some of you, this could be over a difference of opinion or a difference of belief. 
for others of you, it could be something is not what it appears, but either way, I see this month for you is really kind of focusing on your external world and really what you want at large, the bigger picture, basically. I also see here in your cards, Aries, that there seems to be a lot that is going to be revealed this month. We have the Spirit of Masquerade, False, Hidden, and Deceptive. So that could be an energy that you're dealing with in the month of January. We also have Spirit of the Flocks, Gossip, Rivals, uh, Posse. And so for some of you, there could be like some truths coming out in regards to people in your life or people that are around you that may not be who you thought they were, or there may be something going on that you weren't aware of before. Or for some of you, you could already know this, or there could be like people within your career or certain authority figures that maybe you're trying to shed light on in some way or expose in some way. We also have Spirit of the Wolf. And this is about instincts and being kind of like a loner. And so I really feel this month, Aries, that you're seeing a lot, like you're seeing through a lot of the bullshit or a lot of the bullshit is coming out and you're kind of just watching it. Um, for some of you though, I could see a lot of you guys trying to get the truth out or trying to like expose something or get to the truth of the situation. We also have the Seven of Swords being your first card that came out, which also really tells me that this is very much about something going on behind the scenes that's kind of shady. And then we also have the Seven of Wands. So I feel like you could be in a situation where maybe you're feeling like the loner or you're feeling like the lone wolf. Like you see how deceptive or how chaotic certain situations in your life are or certain people in your life are and you're trying to kind of navigate it but you're feeling kind of like you're going against the grain or like you're like the loner in the situation or like the underdog in the situation in some way. But I do see here with judgment and the ace of swords that there will be some kind of truth that comes to light. Like something will come out. There will be a judgment day. For some of you, this could be something that, some kind of truth that you've been denying or something that you've been hiding, you know, in, in your own way. Like it, it could be different for different ones of you, but I really see here that if you have a certain, like if your instincts are telling you something with the wolf card, then you're likely correct. And I feel like some kind of truth is going to come out or you're going to be speaking some kind of truth or announcing something. Something is going to come out and that is going to really change the tides with the wheel of fortune here. It's really going to shift and things are going to change in the opposite direction. So that's what's coming up in your cards. It's not something I would have, I mean, I can see how that would relate to your astrology, but it's not like the first thing that I would have thought of, you know, so that may not relate to everybody, but that's that seemed to be a situation that the cards really wanted to, to bring light to because even the tarot cards and the oracle cards, like it all fits together. Like they're all saying the same thing. So anyways, other than that, for your astrology, we start off January on January 2nd with a Capricorn new moon happening in your 10th house. And so this is going to really shed more light on some kind of new beginning or new chain of events that happens within your career, authority figures, your public image, your reputation, etc. So it's really going to bring those things up. Your future, your goals, your legacy, what direction are you wanting to go in? There's some kind of new energy coming in here with that. And then on the 14th, we will have Mercury going retrograde in the sign of Aquarius, which is your 11th house of friends, social groups, alliances, and also your ambitions and you know what what you want to do and and how to connect make the right connections to get to where you want to go and so those are some things that you could be reflecting on during this mercury retrograde and mercury is also going to retrograde on saturn which rules over your 10th house so that is also going to be a time where you are retrograding on it or retrograding <laughs> it's also going to be a time where you are reflecting on the people in your life and also maybe the people in your life that are related to your career or your public image in some way and if these people are, are really kind of like supposed to be in your life or if they have like your best interest etc you're really going to be reflecting on those things and then we have a cancer full moon around the 17th which is going to be happening in your fourth house so that may be a time where 
you feel a little bit more drawn to your private life or drawn to your home and family life for whatever reason where you're feeling a little bit more private or wanting to do things a little bit more in a personal way. And then we have the nodes shifting on the 18th into your second and eighth house Aries. So this is going to be a time where finances are going to become a really big deal and a really big theme over the next 18 month period after January 18th. So that it's definitely going to be something that you're going to be dealing with. And I talked more about that in your 2022 year ahead horoscope. That video is posted if you would like to go check that out. And then on the 24th, we have Mars, your ruling planet, moving into your 10th house. And this is where things are going to really get uh, kind of turned on in terms of career and public image and your future and your goals and authority figures, reputation, all of that stuff is really going to come to a head once Mars moves in there. That is going to be like a really, really big focus for you. You're going to be really focusing on success and what needs to be done for success, what's necessary. You're really going to be focusing on building some kind of foundation for your future, your career, and where you want to go in your direction. On the 29th venus is going to move direct finally and be done retrograding in your 10th once again career and all that stuff so that will be finally kind of like a time of forward momentum but mercury will be retrograding at that point it will move back into your 10th uh, around the 25th and so that may be a time where you're kind of reflecting on everything that you just learned with the venus retrograde or where you're starting to kind of make sense of everything and and kind of pick up the pieces so so yeah so that is what i see for you aries coming up in the month of january 2022 definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating or seems correct for you in any way i would really love to hear your feedback i would really appreciate it and with that all being said thank you guys so so much for watching i will see you guys in my next video bye what's up taurus this is your january 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead i hope you guys are doing well let's get into your reading so january is a month for you taurus where you are very much focused on your future you are very much reflecting on what are your values and what is important to you and what is necessary when it comes to getting to where you want to go and when it comes to your purpose you could really be reflecting on a lot of purpose related themes like where you feel your purpose is or where you feel your direction is the direction that you're going and if you feel that you are on the right path and if you feel like you are getting there it's also a month where i really feel like you're going to be going through moments of feeling like resurrected or feeling more energized in terms of who you are and what you want to do and where you're going now it's also going to be a month where there will be moments of feeling like things are a bit difficult or where you're feeling like you're kind of dragging or, or trying to push things forward but all in all i really see you kind of working towards some kind of goal or really working towards something that you want for your future. There's also kind of an energy here of learning something new or exploring new realms. So that is basically what I'm seeing for you. I also feel like career uh, and authority figures, uh, reputation, how you brand yourself, all of that may be a really big deal as well in January. But I think the biggest thing happening in January is the node is moving into your sign. So the North Node is finally moving into your sign around the 18th. And so this is going to be a time where you are going to be feeling <laughs> energized. You are going to be feeling resurrected. You are going to be feeling like a sense of vitality. I think that it's going to bring up a lot in terms of who you are, your identity, where you're going and what you want to do. And with your ruling planet Venus retrograde right now in your ninth house, it's really asking you like, what is your potential? And are you living up to your potential? And that's kind of what I see here in your cards with the Knight of Pentacles and the Ten of Wands. It's kind of like, are you living up to your potential? Are you doing things that you want to be doing? Are you, are, are you getting shit done, you know? And so this could be a time where you may, you may feel a little bit delayed or you may feel a little bit set back or you may feel a little bit burnt out in some way, but I do see that you are building towards something. You are building towards a future. You are trying to build the foundation of something that 
is going to make you more comfortable and that is going to help you achieve what you want to achieve. Like achievements are a really big deal this month. Goals are really big focus this month. All of that is really, really big for you right now. You have these desires, you have these wants, you have this vision of where you want to be in the future and what it looks like and all of that, or at least you're reflecting on it this month. And you're also really seeing your potential. You're also really kind of taking some kind of risk or feeling a little bit more faithful, hopeful, or optimistic with your plans and with the direction that you're going in. Now, part of the downside to this though is I do feel like you could be experiencing with the node moving into your sign, certain shadow traits coming up that you're going to need to address. There could be certain fears or there could be certain old insecurities or something like that that's coming up that really kind of pushes you to focus on it so you can address it and so you can heal it. And so I do feel like that is going to be big for you starting the, this month in January, Taurus, where you're really going to have to hone in on what it is that is holding you back and these certain behaviors that you may have that may no longer be working for you. Or at least you're going to start getting remnants of that in January after the 18th. So so yeah, that's your cards. Let's go through your astrology a little bit. On the 14th, Mercury will go retrograde in the sign of Aquarius in your 10th house. And so, and it's going to retrograde basically conjunct Saturn. So that's going to be a time where you're really reflecting on things that may be feeling restrictive, heavy, delayed, or may that you may be feeling like are setting you back in some way in terms of your career, authority figures, reputation, your goals, and what you want to achieve in the world. You may be also kind of reconsidering what you're doing in terms of career or reconsidering what you need to do in terms of having the career, reputation, or achieving the things that you want to achieve. That could be something that you are really focused on in the month of January once Mercury goes retrograde. The 18th, like I said, the nodes will move into your sign and your opposite sign of Scorpio. So this is going to bring kind of a self and other dynamic into play here. And I went into a lot more detail in your 2022 horoscope. That video with all of the horoscopes for 2022 is now up, so definitely make sure you go and check that out. And then on the 24th, Mars will move into your ninth house of belief systems, your future, your goals, your potential, where you feel your purpose is, what I kind of the same area I was talking about in the beginning. Once Mars moves into your ninth house, it's going to be on. Like you are going to be really uh like on some kind of journey to like get to where you want to go you are going to be feeling very driven towards the things that you want to accomplish and towards like reaching your potential and towards what feels purposeful in your life after the 24th that energy is going to be very very strong and then on the 29th your rolling planet venus will finally be done going retrograde and will be going direct so there will finally be somewhat of a forward momentum and you will be feeling a little bit more like you are kind of completing certain lessons or starting to complete certain lessons that you've been learning with venus retrograding the last like month or so so Anyways, um, that is what I'm seeing for you, Taurus, in the month of January. It's definitely a month that is really figuring out maybe even what like belief systems are holding you back or what belief systems that are just no longer working for you that maybe you've been like conditioned to believe in, um, but maybe they're holding you back. Maybe they're not helping you reach your potential anymore or reach the goals that you want to reach. So that could be something else that you're really seeing come up in January or that you could have started even seeing last month in December. So definitely let me know down below if this is accurate or this related at all. I would really love to hear your guys' feedback. And yeah, with that all being said, thank you guys so, so much for watching Taurus. I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Gemini? Welcome to your January 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. So for you, Gemini, in January 2022, I see you guys really going through a lot with finances. Like finances is the big 
the name of the game here what you're doing with money and are you man like basically managing your finances managing your money and really reflecting on financial themes this can also be investments shared money your partner's money other people's money any kind of transactional connections that you have in your life and how that somehow impacts you or your life in particular that is something that you could really be investigating or kind of reflecting on also your beliefs in terms of money or societal trends in terms of money as well could be something else that I could see here for a lot of you guys, you could be even, this could be a month where you are learning more about money, we're getting more serious about finances in some, some matter or another. It's definitely buckling down. I also see that this month, Gemini could be bringing up or digging up certain fears or phobias because the eighth house does deal with that. And that's kind of the big focus for January is your eighth house. So it could be a month where you are having to deal with things that may be a little bit out of your control or feel a little bit out of your control at the time or where you're having to deal with certain fears that you have that you haven't addressed or that you need to address to move on. I see that in your cards here as well. We have spirits of the past, nostalgic, aching, uh, old connections. And so for some of you, that could be something that you're dealing with in the month of January, people from the past or certain things from the past coming back around that need to be dealt with. We also have spirit of elixirs, intoxication, uninhibited, uninhibited, and shameless. And so you do want to be careful because with this Venus retrograde on Pluto, especially in your eighth house, it can be like an intoxicating energy. It can be like seducing or scandalous. And so you do want to be careful with that. And then after that, we have spirit of the woods, which is basically about your fears, voices, goblins, nightmares, uh, basically like paranoia, phobias, you know, fears, etc. And so if you're not careful, I feel like you could really get kind of intoxicated by those things on a month like this, especially if you're a Gemini rising. You could start doubting yourself or you could be kind of called to do something that you wouldn't be like that you wouldn't normally do or act in a way that you wouldn't normally act based out of things coming back from the past or old behaviors resurfacing from the past. And so it could be a time where you are thinking about doing something a little bit shady or scandalous or whatever. And it, I just would say that I would really think about that and get to the root. The eighth house is about investigation and getting to the root of issues. So this is a time where you can really do that. If something has been bothering you or if there's been some kind of background noise you've been dealing with that has been whispering to you or coming up in your life somehow this would be a perfect month to get to the bottom of it and really figure out what it is that's that's happening here you know what i mean it may seem out of your control at first it may seem like you don't have control over it but i think that if you allow yourself to get to the bottom of it and you stop trying to do everything yourself and you allow other people to help you you may be able to deal with it. I also think relationships are a really big theme right now for you in January where you're really reflecting on compromising and relationships and relationship dynamics and how to kind of find a middle ground within relationships or certain connections in your life. It may not even be romantic. For some, it could just be financial partnerships, business partnerships, transactional relationships like I don't know, someone that you're getting a loan from or whatever the case may be. But either way, you are dealing with money and resources and how that relates to people in your life. And so this is a month where I think that there could definitely be some changes uh, regarding financial obligations or financial situations, but also bringing up things where you may need to ask for help. You may need to find a way to compromise or find a middle ground. You know, don't try to do everything on your own or don't try to manage everything on your own. This is definitely a financial month with the Empress coming up here and dealing with resources, etc. And so it's like you're really trying to get to 
like you're really trying to make the foundation or build the foundation of where you want to be financially this month and you are likely learning a lot about it too with the king of swords you're likely investigating a lot learning a lot doing your research and trying to get smarter or more intelligent on you know finances or some kind of area of life it doesn't even have to be finances or resources necessarily it could be really any topic but it may be a topic that's a little bit more taboo or that's a little bit more like undercover in some way like not 100 percent uh you know out there or known or like everybody does it like it may be something that's a little bit more behind closed doors in some way but i do see you doing a lot of learning and research on those types of things in January with your eighth and ninth house like really being activated here. So something else that we have going down uh, in January is Mercury, your ruling planet is retrograding on the 14th. And so this is a big deal because if you're a Gemini rising, then you're ruled by Mercury. And so Mercury retrograding in your ninth house is definitely going to bring up themes of reflecting on your belief systems and reflecting on even like the bigger picture and learning and your worldviews and your like political views or even like social issues with it being an Aquarius. And so those are some things that you could be seeing come up, but also like social trends and stuff like that. And then when Mercury, like Mercury will move back into Capricorn on the 25th of January. And so then it will be more about uh, reflecting on finances and all of those other things that I named in the beginning, like fears and transactional connections, relations, etc. So anyways, we have a Cancer full moon on the 17th and this is definitely going to be a time where you are possibly ending something financial or where you are closing something out financially or you're re really reflected on resources and money as well in some way where you're kind of getting back to your comfort zone or getting a little bit more comfortable with something around that time. And then on the 18th, the nodes will finally move out of your sign and your opposite sign of Sag uh, from your first and seventh house. So since May 2020, you've been learning a ton of karmic lessons to do with you <laughs> you your appearance how you show up in the world your body your behaviors your identity versus your relationships and other people in your life and significant people in your life and your commitments and your relationship dynamic your opinions and beliefs regarding you and relationships and so it will finally be a time where that is starting to close out and once the nodes move into Scorpio and Taurus, they will be in your 12th and 6th house. Now, I talked a lot about this in great detail in your 2022 horoscope. I did a whole video on the horoscopes for each sign for the year ahead. So definitely make sure that you go check that out if you haven't already. But the North Node moving into your 12th house will definitely be a time where you are really doing also something kind of behind the scenes where you're wanting to find like where seclusion feels a little bit more valuable to you for whatever reason or doing something um, on your own will feel more simple to you. But at first you may be drawn to com complexity or uh, chaos regarding your day-to-day -day life, your work, your health. Like you, there may be something coming up there where you're like letting go of old attachments or having to deal with old attachments to certain complexity and chaos in your day-to-day -day life in some way and then you start realizing like wait it would be just way simpler if I just kind of backed away or did my own thing or did this on my own or whatever the case may be and so it's going to be finding a balance between kind of your day-to-day -day reality versus kind of doing things behind the scenes or doing things on your own and so um and being kind of secluded so those are some things that you could be seeing come up but like i said i went into a lot more detail in my 2022 year ahead horoscope so mars is going to move into capricorn your eighth house on the 24th and that is definitely going to spice things up in terms of that eighth house sector of finances, investments, other people's money, et cetera. And so you may see more of a drive there to manage things or uh, 
you know, more change happening there once Mars moves in around the 24th or so. Venus will go direct on the 29th and finally start moving forward. And so all of these financial themes you've been reflecting on with Venus in your eighth will start to like kind of fall in order and start making sense and start moving forward after she goes direct at the very end of the month and starting into February as well. Things will just be moving forward. So anyways, that is what I'm seeing coming up for you guys, Gemini, for the month ahead. Definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Cancer? Welcome to your tarot and astrology horoscope for January 2022. Let's go ahead and get into it. So Cancer, for you in the upcoming month, I really see you guys moving towards something stable. That seems to be the theme. It's like you're tired of the bullshit. You're tired of toxicity with people around you or with close relationships in your life. You are tired of... I just feel like a lot of Cancer Risings could really be reflecting on relationships and relationship dynamics and even like past relationship patterns and situations or people there could be a lot coming up from the past a lot of you guys may be feeling like it's time to move on in some way or it's time for a new chapter or that you may want to readjust your relationships in some way and i feel like a lot of you guys could be feeling a little bit nostalgic like really kind of thinking back to the past because we have spirits of the past here which is about being nostalgic and about like the way things were and so I really feel that for some of you guys and you guys may be thinking back to a time in the past where things seemed more solid more stable where there was more value or quality within a situation or within your life or within a relationship and I feel like for some of you, we have Spirit of the Apple, which is about temptation. It can also be like a test or an offer, something tempting, like something could be very, very tempting in January, or it could have already even started at the end of December. But there's definitely something here that it's like you're really reflecting on the past, you're really thinking about the past and where things just seem stable, where like where you had a certain anchor, whether it was like a person or a time period or whatever, it's like something was anchoring you and now you may feel unstable. It may feel like things are kind of up in the air and everywhere and you're not really like, you're not really sure what to do. You're kind of, I, I feel like there's just a lot, there just may be some uncertainty in the air right now for you, Cancer, and you're kind of, you're like, you're trying to figure out what to do about it or what needs to change for you to move forward. You're really reflecting on what you want for your future and you're really looking ahead. And I feel like with Jupiter and Pisces now in your ninth house, like, you're seeing your potential. You're seeing what could be. You know, you're seeing like you have something to look forward to. You have a vision now to look forward to. And like I say this all the time, uh, not on here actually, but in my personal life, like I've said this before because I'm someone like I've been in points in my life where I didn't have any kind of vision of any kind of future. And that shit is like so, that shit may be like the most depressing shit ever. Like I, it is like scary as fuck. Like seriously, it's like, oh my God, like I, there's nothing to look forward to. There's nothing to like be excited about or there's nothing to like, there, there's just no bit, like I couldn't picture any kind of future or imagine any kind of vision for myself at those points in time. And it would feel like I was empty. Like I had nothing to look forward to. Like there was no hope. There was just nothing, like nothingness. And that shit would like scare the hell out of me. But I feel like maybe you were there at one point uh, or you were feeling that and then you with Jupiter and Pisces now it's like you're you're having a vision now it's like you can see you have something to look forward to you have a vision to look forward to or at least someone will start developing if not like exactly right this second when you're watching this one will start developing in January and you start seeing the beauty of your future, the beauty of what you have to look forward to, the beauty of what you want in life. And I feel like some cancers could really be thinking about 
more independence in their life. I really see here that some of you guys, not all of you guys, could be thinking about like either you broke up recently with someone or you split up with someone or you're on a break or something and you could be thinking about a future without them. Like finally, you know, like part of you may be reflecting on the past or where things were when the relationship started and you're kind of like, yeah, like this, it was great then. Why is it not great now? You know? And, but part of you is like, okay, I know that we're not going to get back to that time because there's just been too much hurt that's been done. And so it's time to walk towards something, walk towards something more stable, even if emotionally it hurts, right? Now, it's not going to be all of you. It's just one like specific situation that I was getting. For some of you, you could be like fine in your relationship, but maybe there are certain things in, within the relationship that you are wanting to address or wanting to change, you know? And for others of you, it may not necessarily be a romantic relationship. It could be a business partnership or just a really close friend in your life or something like that. But I do feel like you're really reflecting on your relationships and part of you is very tempted to take some kind of action or to do something. And it's funny because I actually made like a TikTok like back before Venus retrograded and I said, what signs will be most like tempted uh, during like the next few months or whatever. And like you were one of the signs I put on there because Venus on Pluto is happening in your seventh. And so it's going to be a time. But anyways, I do see you guys walking towards something more stable. I don't know if this is a person or if this is just a vision for your future direction you're wanting to go in for yourself. But either way, I feel like you are leaving behind something or someone that is just not stable anymore. For some of you guys, it could even be a job, okay? Like it could literally even be a job. Mars is in your seventh house, the south node's been in your, or your sixth house, sorry, the south node's been in your sixth house. So it could be a time where you're leaving behind a job because it's just gotten too too chaotic or there's too much like arguing or conflict within it so you may be starting a business or you may be like wanting to be more in charge in some way but either way i do feel like you're you're wanting more control in your life and you're wanting more independence and stability basically for some of you this could be financial where maybe you're rethinking your finances in some way where you are wanting to invest more or do something that's going to give you more of a solid financial foundation. That is what I'm seeing with your cards, Cancer, and really astrologically too. Other than that, I would say a few of the main things for you this month are the Cancer full moon that's happening in your sign around the 17th. And that is going to definitely bring up, like it's gonna be a time of getting back to you, but it's like you're a new you, right? And so it's kind of a time of like uh, one chapter is ending and another one's beginning. And so that's kind of how it's gonna feel. It's kind of like a, it's kind of getting back to you and be like, oh, there I am again. And then you're gonna kind of start moving forward again. And then it's like, oh yeah, I've changed and we're doing things differently this time. Another thing that is happening is Mercury is gonna retrograde on the 14th in your eighth house of shared resources and finances and stuff that you share with other people, connections, like basically deep bonds that you have with other people, but also it can deal with like, fears and phobias and things that may seem out of your control. So it could be a time with Mercury retrograde that there are certain delays or reflections happening in those areas. And then it will move back into Capricorn, your seventh house sector towards the very end of the month on the 25th. And that will be a time where you're reflecting on your relationships and what you give and take in relationships as well. And also the nodes move this month, which is a big deal. They move out of your 12th and 6th house of basically like your your subconscious mind and what goes on behind the scenes and seclusion versus your day-to-day -day reality and your beliefs, your health, your work, your day-to-day -day routines, etc. And so there's been a lot of focus on those areas like living in reality versus living out of reality, like seclusion and all of that and taking time to really like get your mind straight and like balance out your mind. It's been a time of really also letting go of bad habits and self-destructive behaviors. 
And so that is wrapping up in January majorly. And so you may start really seeing some like fast track lessons there the last, these like first few weeks of January. But then on the 18th, the nodes move into Taurus and Scorpio, which is your fifth and 11th house your fifth house being of love and romance and sexuality. And so with the south node there, once again, that could be a little bit tempting <laughs> to like do some things that you wouldn't normally do or like be an undercover seductress or something. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Maybe though, maybe. Like I talked about this in my 2022 horoscope uh, for all signs. So definitely go check that out. If you have not watched your horoscope for 2022, Go do that because you're missing out if you have not. It's a, you know, there's big things happening that you want to be aware of. So anyways, and then the North Node moving into your 11th house of friends, your social life, etc. So you are going to, there's going to be a lot of chaos and complexity and like messiness that may get dug up in your love romance sector and where you find pleasure in certain toxic ways that you may be finding pleasure and also children, stuff like that. So Things may be getting dug up there that may be messy over that next 18 month cycle. And then eventually you're gonna wanna go towards more of a simplistic thing. Like you're gonna wanna be around quality people, do quality things, have ambitions that actually mean something and that are actually stable. Like you're gonna be pulled towards more stability rather than like chaos, you know, like messiness. And so, and then find kind of like a balance between the two, because it's not that you're moving away from the Scorpio fifth house. You're just finding a way to integrate it and heal the things that may come up there. So anyways, and then Mars is going to move into Capricorn on the 24th of January, which is your seventh house again of relationships and others. And so with Mars there, there's definitely going to be like a drive or like a, it's going to heat things up. There's definitely going to be some change or some heatedness coming in relationships, whether by you or your partner. So, or just significant people in your life may feel a little bit more confrontational or a little bit more like individual, like in more into individuality or focused or like busy with something, you know, something like that. So do watch out for that um, once Mars moves in, but it's definitely gonna be a, a focused time of relationships even more at the end of the month and even into February. So then Mercury will retrograde back into Capricorn, like I said, on the 25th. And the 29th, Venus finally goes forward and starts going direct and will no longer be retrograding in your seventh. So it will be a time of like really integrating the lessons you've learned in relationships. And there will be more of a forward momentum there after that. So anyways, that, <laughs> I know it's a lot, but that is your January Cancer. Uh, hopefully it ends up resonating. Definitely feel free to let me know down below. I'd really, I'm really interested to see how you guys are feeling all this crazy energy with your seventh house and stuff. So if you do have any stories to share or experiences to share that resonate with that, let me know. Or even if you don't entirely resonate and you would like to share your experience, feel free to do that down below. And you can also come out back throughout the month and see if it resonates more if you're watching this like in the beginning of the month. So anyways, that is what I have for you, Cancer. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great and insightful month and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What is up, my lovely fellow Leo Risings? This will resonate most if you're a Leo Rising, but you can may find some messages in here if you're a Leo Sun or Moon, so do keep that in mind. What is up and welcome to 2022, you guys. Welcome to your January 2022 tarot and astrology reading. We have some really cool stuff coming for you in the very beginning of this year that I'm really excited to tell you about. So listen the fuck up. Basically, Leo, January is a month, okay, where you are going to be focused on some shit. You are working on some shit. You are getting organized. You are you are doing the things that you need to do to get to where you want to go. Like you see now that to get to the top of the mountain, you first have to like have a foundation, a steady foundation. You first have to have, you, you have to be organized. You know, you have to really have the things that you're going to need to get there, right? Like to build your empire, you need the foundation, right? And so that is what you're working on at this time. You're working on your foundation. Some of you may be quite literally like working on work, projects, health, you know, your day-to-day -day reality to maintain your lifestyle is really a massive focus for January for you guys. You may be feeling a lot more focused and honed in on what needs to be done. 
pattern, your schedules, your routines, the shit that you gotta do to get to where you wanna go, you know? You may be feeling, I, I kind of feel like for Leos, you know, Mars is moving through our fifth house. So we are feeling alive, we are feeling activated, <laughs> we are feeling lively and vivacious and just rare, you know? Like we are just ready to take some shit on. With Mars in your fifth house, that's also maybe a time where you are feeling uber sexual or where you have a lot of prospects. You know, you got a lot of people, you got a lot of dates going on or you got a lot of interest or romance or whatever, you know, like you're just feeling good about yourself. I really feel that here for Leos. And if you're not, you may be going through some other things in your, in your astrology that could be, you know, keeping you a little bit down or whatever. But I feel like for most Leos, like this is, I really like this energy for this month. There is a large focus on love and relationships, but I really see good things here. It's like you're really wrapping up so many lessons that you've learned through the past year and being able to integrate them. Um, and if you're not feeling that way just yet, I feel like a lot of Leos will probably feel this way like right off the bat in the beginning of the year. But if you're not feeling that way just yet, just, you know, be patient. And I know like that, that's bullshit. I shouldn't have even said that because I hate when fucking people say that. It's like, what the fuck? Don't tell me that. That does not help anybody, okay? But <laughs> but I do feel like for a lot of Leo Risings, if you're not feeling this way, I do feel like it's going to come. And I feel like you really, there may be some self-esteem issues that you need to work on. There may be, uh, you need to allow yourself to play, to find the balance between having fun. And even if like you don't have time to have fun because you're so busy with your schedule, your routine, working on shit, whatever, find ways to make that fun. Find ways to spice that up. And I feel like a lot of you guys are already feeling that way or already doing that. But if you're not, like if you're feeling like this shit sucks already or whatever, then find ways to have fun find ways to laugh find ways to incorporate to like make the best out of what you're doing to let your childish side out to allow yourself to be a little bit immature here and there you know also with mars in your fifth house i feel like there is like a large focus on fun and passion and doing things that inspire you and motivate you and i just really like this month for leo honestly i will say that like towards the middle of the month around like the 17th we have a cancer full moon in our 12th so that may be a time where you are not feeling as focused on work and your day-to-day -day life and reality and routines and all that, where you are feeling a little bit more internal, where you feel like you need to retreat, where there may be some past stuff resurfacing for you to clear out, uh, some old memories, you may be feeling somewhat nostalgic around that time. And we'll talk about that in the Cancer full moon video, so don't worry, but yeah, so I'm gonna start with your cards first and then we'll get into kind of like your like astrology dates of January, like all the shit happening in January. But so we have the spirit of the Fae here. And I just, I fucking love this card. Um, it says mischief, play, fantasy. And so I really feel like you guys are feeling that this month, Leo. And also Mars is has been squaring Neptune a little bit on and off, like especially at the very beginning of the month. And so this is a time where you may be feeling a little bit more like, wanting to have fun and wanting to be mischievous and being a little bit more curious and feeling more inspired and motivated and just like goofy and childlike. But I will say here that you do want to be careful that you are not taking things too far. And as Leo Risings, I think a lot of you, and I know I have, gotten lessons in taking fun things a little bit too far. <laughs> With the south node in our fifth house over this last year and a half, uh, which it's moving out in January actually, but I think we've all got some lessons in like, okay, yeah, this is fun and I wanna have fun and I wanna do fun things and I wanna be young and I wanna enjoy my youth um, for us that, are still, I mean, even if you're older, like fuck, you can be young, you know what I mean? So that's not really directed at only people that consider themselves young. I mean, you can, I know a lot of people that you would not think were young, but like they have young souls, you know what I mean? Like they, they look it and they act it, like their energy is just like, yeah. So I'm not trying to be, uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to discriminate against anyone's age here, but I just mean like, there's a certain, uh, there's certain lessons we've been learning when it comes to having fun and when it comes to being youthful and childlike. And sometimes with the South Node, it can be a trap or it can get toxic or it can be like a, we fall into like a vicious circle. And I know for me personally, I've learned like, 
yes, it is so important to incorporate that fun-like energy and to have fun, but also if that's all you're doing and you're neglecting your responsibilities, uh, then it becomes not so fun, right? Then it starts becoming toxic and it's really easy to go overboard. And so we do have to be careful with that. So I'm sure a lot of you guys may have learned those lessons over the last year and a half. So I would just say be careful with that. But other than that, I feel like this is like a very mischievous, playful month. And um, with Mars in our fifth house up until it moves around the 24th of the month. But anyway, so we also have Spirit of the Snowflake, special, irreplaceable, one of a kind. And so this could be a time where we're really either seeing the value in ourselves and seeing like just how great we are, just how special we are, or someone else. I feel like this is a time where you could be really feeling that way about someone special in your life or just really noticing the aspects of your life that are really good and irreplaceable. And yeah, I just I just have a really good feeling for Leo Risings this month especially. But anyway, so we also have Spirit of Hecate, Goddess of the Night, uh, Crossroads, and Ghost. And so this i feel is i feel like some of you guys could be feeling the mischievousness in a whole nother way where it could be like you're having thoughts of like uh pushing the boundaries or maybe doing something a little scandalous and i feel like you may want to watch out for that and i feel like others of you could quite literally be at a crossroads or have a decision or some kind of choice to make in the month of january but anyway so moving on um <laughs> i also see here for a lot of you leos that something really difficult or stressful is finally wrapping up for you this month it's like you are coming full circle with something you're coming full circle like there's like a major phase of your life ending um so it quite literally may feel like new year new me like it really may feel like that this year because there is some kind of fear or some kind of stress or some kind of trauma that you are integrating or that you're finally moving on from and it just feels like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders it feels like you are lighter it feels like you can breathe and although you may be kind of pausing for a second like and that's what i really see here with this um, hanged man and uh, high priestess i really feel like this is talking about the cancer full moon this cancer full moon is going to be opposite Pluto in our sixth house. And so this may make us aware of things that we weren't aware of. And this may bring back something from the past, or this may bring up something we've been subconsciously or intuitively feeling that we didn't quite want to face. And so it may be a time where we pull back and are reflecting or waiting or uh, retreating in some way a little bit more than usual towards the middle of the month and where certain things from our past with this judgment card, certain judgments that we made in the past or certain guilt that we've had or certain things that we've had going on that need to be forgiven or let go of or purged or faced or integrated are coming up for us to really deal with. But I feel like we're going to get through it. Like I really, really do. Like all this, you have a lot of major arcana in your reading, probably more than any other sign I think so far. Um, I think that this is like a, an awakening or like a come to moment, like a reckoning or a, a moment of forgiveness for a lot of Leos towards the middle of the month where you're just feeling liberated. You're feeling set free. You're feeling like, fuck, yes, I can fucking do this. You know what I mean? Like you are, you're just doing it. You know, you're feeling like you're flying away, a bird, whatever, you know? Um, so anyways and then we have the three of wands here uh and this is why i really feel like we're getting through it because it's kind of like wow okay i my perception has changed my perspective have changed i'm looking towards a new future i was able to move through that i was able to really get through that and it's like it gives us a whole new perspective and it gives us a whole new way of looking at things it kind of opened things up it gives us like a new vision for our future basically and then like i said we're going to be working a lot there is something that we are really working on and i really feel like it you know our goals for work and our goals for our career our, our goals for success our reputation i are, are really going to become apparent by the end of this month like we're going to have a new vision for our future and what we want to do with work 
I think that a lot of you guys could be getting a lot of clients if you do something where you have clients, you know, if you run a business or whatever, or a lot of customers, or you're just going to be really putting something together. You're really gonna be, there could be like collaborations or teamwork going on here in some way. And then we have the emperor and I just love this ending with this because I really see the emperor more so as Capricorn. I mean, I do see some areas, but I also see a lot of Capricorn. Like this is just Capricorn to me, but, and with all this Capricorn energy in our sixth house, I really feel like we're getting more responsible. We are really fulfilling obligations. We are like really focused on our schedules. We are just being a lot more like we're, we're, we're raising the bar for ourselves. Basically, we're raising the standard for ourselves, And we're like, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. This is what's happening. Like, and so I feel like you are really starting to build that foundation, right? You're building this throne so you can fucking sit on it. You know what I mean? Uh, so you can get to where you're trying to go in business, with career, with what, with reputation. Like this is just, this is a fucking badass reading, dude. Like probably my favorite reading so far because this is like really awesome. And you guys know I'm not all love, light, and twin flame fuck over here, but that is, I'm like really getting good shit for Leos. And I know I feel like fucking great lately. So anyways, but um, so astrologically speaking, Leo, we have Mercury going retrograde this month on the 14th. It will retrograde in your seventh house. So that will bring some slight delays or confusion or miscommunications or reflecting on something regarding relationships or your partner. You could more so notice this with your partner or significant people in your life, like maybe they're having to go back and revisit something or something from the past is coming up from them or they're having to redo something or, you know, or there's some kind of like miscommunication or delays happening there in some form or another, or there's some kind of reflection period. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be fine. I think it's just really reflecting on what you want to submit within your relationships and commitments and reflecting on like, what it, because it retrogrades on Saturn and Saturn's in your seventh house. It's been in your seventh house. So it may be for some Leo risings, rethinking your long-term commitments within relationships or rethinking your future or how you want to progress in relationships. Um, but for the most part, I feel like it's just going to be a reflection period. And then Mercury retrograde is going to move back into Capricorn around the 25th of January, where it's going to be in your sixth house. And I think that's going to be a time where you're really reflecting on a lot of what you've learned with all these Capricorn themes like Venus retrograding in Capricorn and all of this other Capricorn shit that we're going through. Um, and so that's going to be a time of where I think you're starting to make logical sense of what you've learned and take a little bit more action there or reflect on what you've learned uh, within work, you know, your day-to-day -day routines, health, etc. So then uh, on the 18th, Uranus goes direct in your 10th house of career, public image, authority figures, reputation, your future, your goals, etc. So that could be kind of like a moving forward with something in that area or uh, some kind of inspiration that comes in that area that you start implementing. And then on the 18th as well, the nodes finally switch from your fifth house of uh, Capricorn and your 11th house of Gemini. This, they, they end up switching into your fourth and 10th house. So your house of home and family, and then your house of career and public image. So your public life and your personal life basically are gonna be really big focuses over the next year and a half, starting on January 18th. This is a really big deal. Um, and I talked a lot more in depth about that in my 2022 horoscopes for each sign. So go watch that video if you haven't already. You definitely don't want to miss that. But we have Mars on the 24th, as I said before, moving into Capricorn in your sixth house. So that will definitely be a time of like work bitch kind of energy. Like you are going to be like... I am the boss up in this bitch. Like it will be a time of managing some shit, like boss bitch type of vibes, you know, like just going for it. And so, um, yeah, you're going to get very, very motivated and very, very focused on your goals with work and your day-to-day -day life and career and the things that you need to really implement in order to get to where you want to go. So that's going to be a really, really work focused time toward these, towards the end of the month as well. And even moving into February. So 
Um, and then we have Venus going direct finally on the 29th of January where you will start seeing some forward momentum in these Venus retrograde lessons that you've been learning about work and your day-to-day -day routines and all of that. So yeah, so that is basically your astrology and tarot for the month, Leo. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated with you. I would really love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for your support and for watching this. I truly, truly appreciate it. Make sure to check out my other videos. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, share this video, and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Virgo? Welcome to your January 2022 tarot and astrology reading. I hope you guys are doing well. So Virgo, January 2022 for you is really about finding what fuels you, finding what inspires you, finding what makes you happy, finding what brings you joy, and really finding where you have fun, where you are passionate. And so it could be a time where you are feeling a little bit slowed down or held back or where you are kind of anticipating some kind of big change regarding career or some kind of direction that you've been going in in your life. I really see here in your cards. Um, I kind of feel like Virgo, you are in a in a weird place where you're you're just not feeling very into things that you're normally into. It's kind of like the, the old things that you used to find joy or fun or inspiration in are just no longer. And you may be feeling a little bit bored or you may be feeling a little bit delayed or held back or just not as inspired as you usually are in some way with this Venus retrograde in your fifth and then the ruler Saturn in your sixth. That's kind of like, I don't... I don't know what to do with this. Like on your day-to-day -day basis, you could be feeling a little bit uh, bored or uninspired in some way. And I also really feel like you have some fears regarding certain changes in your future, possibly, you know, with a job or with money for some of you or something along those lines. It's like you're anticipating some kind of change here. And for some of you, you could be a little bit fearful of that change. Now, for others of you, I feel like this is a time where you are, you're kind of waiting for something to change on its own because we have like the three of pinnacles here and the world card and then the two of wands behind that. And so it's kind of like you're waiting for something to change with some kind of situation before doing anything about it. And, but that waiting is actually holding you back and actually working against you. It's actually kind of like a self-defeating thing. I, I feel like this is kind of being controlled by a certain fear or a certain uh, lack of, of in your life with a certain situation. And I feel like you're also really considering what you want in the world. And you're also, but I feel like some of your fears are holding you back from what you really want. And that's the thing. It's like, maybe you don't, maybe there's a certain insecurity there, or maybe you don't think you're good enough, or maybe you don't like think that you can do it, or you're afraid of rejection or something like that. It's like, you have these goals, you have these ambitions, you have these visions of what you want to accomplish in the world. And all you really need to do is just take that first step. You know what I mean? So three of pinnacles, not the 10 of pinnacles. You're not trying to get to the top of the staircase yet. You're you know, you know what you need to do to get to the stop of the top of the staircase. And that needs to be your first move. And you know that because you're a Virgo and you know how things work. Um, but there's something holding you back here. It's like there's something that you're scared of or there's something that makes you anxious thinking about it. It's like there's something holding you back that you're like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if this is worth it, you know, but not taking action and just contemplating it is also actually self-defeating as well. And so that is a decision within itself. Just saying. Now, the love life though, let's talk about the love life. If you are a Virgo rising, especially, I do feel like the love life, it looks rather juicy and good right now. Or, you know, I guess for some Virgos, maybe your love life is on and popping, but something is on and popping with the love life or at least the friendship life or maybe even with your child. You know what I mean? Like if you have children, like I just, I feel like there is a genuine connection here and it feels youthful. It feels fun. It's like a reignition, a reignition of like emotions and it's just like 
there's a certain level of curiosity, there's a certain level of like new emotions that are kind of arising that you're becoming aware of. And there's like just a certain childlike energy around you, Virgo, whether it's with you or with someone that's around you. But I just feel like there's something with a connection in your life going really, really good in the month of January. Um, and I feel like that is really working because we have temperance here. It's like a, a flow, it's just flowing and it's like uh, an easy compromise. It's like easy going, you know, it's, it's, it's really kind of easy right now um, in the love life. So that's good. And also Jupiter's in your seventh. And so yes, baby, it is on with relationships. So that's really good for you guys. And I also feel here like you're trying to also find kind of like a balance between love and passion versus things that you need to do, like how to do things in a responsible and mature way. And that could be holding you back as well a little bit, you know? So we also have spirit of stone, frozen, delayed, and longing. So some of you guys, like I was saying, there's some kind of waiting here that's happening where you're not really taking action. We have spirit of earth, nature, grounded ancestors. For some of you guys, there could be like an ancestral thing going on. Mars is in your fourth house. And so there could be you know, you could be reflecting on your heritage, on your ancestors, on your parents, you know, uh, things like that. We also have Spirit of Christ. <laughs> now, I'm not a very religious person, but it's just a card. So forgiveness, reconciliation, unconditional love. And so once again, that's what I see here. It's like a beautiful energy. Um, there is something beautiful going on. There's some someone around you that loves you unconditionally or that you love unconditionally conditionally or both. And then we also have spirit of elixirs, intoxication, and uninhibited shameless. You do want to be careful though, Virgo, with intoxication, uh, with Venus retrograde in your fourth house, having too much fun, going over the top, you know, and I'm sure you're already very much aware of that anyway, because you're a Virgo and you got Capricorn there, you know when the party is over, you know when to like kind of stop, you know it's like, okay, time to grow up, you know. Um, but I would just say that I, I kind of actually see this a little bit more in the in the form of feeling intoxicated by love or feeling intoxicated by something that's going very good around you regarding love or somebody in your life that you're feeling very connected to that it, it just feels very happy. It just feels very inspirational. It just feels very good. It just feels like alive, you know? Um, so I kind of see it more by like that, like you're just feeling very intoxicated by whoever this is in your life. Um, if you have a partner, it may be a partner. If not, it may be like a really good friend or someone really cool that you met. Like it's just the relationship life is getting really good or going to get really good in January, starting in January at least. Um, and so that's really awesome. For some of you though, it could be that maybe you're drinking a little bit too much or something like that. I mean, we do have temperance here and we do have the page of cups here. So if you are drinking or something like that, it's uh, important to moderate, right? And I think that's really it. You're trying to find a flow. You're trying to find moderation. You're trying to find um, how to balance things out, right? How to really moderate having fun and love versus things that you need to do and all of that. And so that is what I'm seeing here for you, Virgo, and your cards. Now, other than that, I basically went over most of your astrology. Uh, on the 17th, we'll have a Cancer full moon. That will be in your 11th house of friends and social groups, ambitions, etc. So there could be some kind of peak themes coming up around that time to do with those types of things. And then on the 14th, Mercury will retrograde in your sixth house of work, health, and daily routine. So it will be a massive time of really going back and kind of reflecting and reorganizing that area of your life, but also reorganizing your life, like what needs to be done, catching up, things like that. There could be some delays though in that regard. And then uh, on the 18th, the nodes will finally move out of your fourth and 10th house and they will move into your third and ninth house. I talked a lot more about that in my 2022 year 
year I had horoscopes. I have a whole video going over each sign, so you can get that on my channel for free. And then on the 24th, Mars will be moving into Capricorn, your fifth house. And this will bring even more of that fifth house any energy. You will be feeling very driven to do things that feel fun, to do things that bring you joy, uh, to accomplish goals or to set goals that make you feel joyful in some way that you enjoy and so that will be good it will also be good for the sex life so uh pay attention to that on the 24th then venus will go direct on the 29th okay and then finally that that reflection period that you've been in really regarding what you value in terms of love relationships hobbies goals is going to be finally moving forward and you're going to be wrapping up those lessons there by the end of the month so anyways virgo that is what i'm seeing for you guys for january 2022 definitely let me know down below if this reading resonated i'd really really love to hear your feedback or at least what happens for you or how you're feeling the energy this month it really really uh i just love hearing your feedback okay so uh, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Libra, my lovely Libras, it is your turn. Welcome to your January 2022 tarot and astrology reading. I hope you guys are doing well and let's get into it. Happy New Year. Libra, January 22 is definitely bringing up a lot to do with your home, your family, your roots, your heritage, your foundation. What do you want? What are your goals in terms of those things? Where, what are you trying to build for yourself? What kind of foundation, stable, sturdy foundation do you need in this area? And you're really reflecting on these things. You're also really reflecting on relationships with people very close to you, family, people that you live with, or just people that are a major part of your personal life or even your past. And uh, this is a time where you could be feeling a little bit of melancholy or you could be feeling a little bit of nostalgia or you could be feeling like it's time to move on from something. It's it's time to, it, you may be feeling kind of weighed down by home and family responsibilities or home and family obligations or something along those lines. Like it may feel like you need to be the responsible one or like you're doing all the work in a certain area of your life and I just get the sense of boredom here and I feel like that sense of boredom that need to have fun or that need to be a little bit more playful may be resulting in something that you're not seeing clearly and it may look really good or something may appear really good but actually it may be disruptive. And maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want some kind of change. Maybe you want some kind of disruption. Maybe you want to shake things up. That's kind of the energy that I'm getting here in your cards. And it would also be, it would also kind of match your astrology, but do you remember this is a general reading, okay? And it will resonate more if you're Libra rising. But yeah, I just feel like you've gotten to a certain point with something and you're kind of sick of waiting for it. And I really feel like you are trying to build towards goals. You're trying to build towards a sturdy foundation or a stable family or a stable home life, a stable home. Like you're really putting in a lot of work towards your goals, but you may be feeling like kind of bored with it or like it's not giving you the payoff right away. Like you're becoming maybe a little bit impatient. And so you may fall into a habit of instigation, instigating things, and that may end up backfiring or that may not give you the outcome, the desired outcome that you wanted. You're feeling very ambitious and you're feeling very motivated, but you're also feeling very bored and dissatisfied in some area of your life I really see here. And with the devil card coming up here reversed, I really feel like this is kind of like you're at a point now where it's like I could fall back into an old pattern if I really wanted to. I, you know, could shake things up and disrupt things if I really wanted to. And I feel like this is kind of like, do you really want to fall back into that old pattern? You know, do you really want to do that? Because, and I feel like that's something that you're kind of considering. And and, and then I feel like you, you kind of realize this month, like you're trying to fill a void possibly. And I feel like you kind of realize this month, like even that doesn't sound good, right? Like, and it's just kind of like, well, what do I do? Like, where do I go from here? Something's not working out. 
or you kind of feel like you're going against the tide or you kind of feel like you're being singled out or you kind of feel like people are not on the same page as you or people are not on the same level as you. And I don't feel like the way that you're seeing things is very clear right now for whatever reason. It's like you're being motivated off of something that may not be entirely true. You may have a certain image or vision or fantasy that isn't exactly what it appears to be. And this is a month where you could be feeling that and you could be feeling a little bit bored. You could be feeling a little bit numb. You could be feeling a little bit apathetic. For some of you, I mean, like worst case scenario, you could be feeling a little bit depressed or just a little bit too caught up in your obligations with home, family, your personal life. Like, and I feel like you want to get out and have fun. And a lot of you are really exploring your surroundings more, your environment more, your city, town, whatever. Like you may be getting out and doing things more, but you do want to be careful that you are not taking things too far. This is a time where you can really recover from a lot of things as long as you don't fall back into those old things. This is a time where you can do a lot of healing, where you can get a lot of fulfillment out of just pausing, relaxing, healing, like working on the shit that you need to fucking work on and really maybe some meditation, maybe getting into some mindfulness, maybe getting into some yoga, dance, mind work, whatever the case may be. I really feel like there is some tension here within you, but there's also a little bit like you may feel like you're missing something or like you're lacking something or like you miss some kind of opportunity with the four of cups here. And so you may be kind of wondering like, what's the next move? What do I do? You're trying to handle things with a certain elegance, but at the same time, you may be drawn to disruption or to shake things up a little bit with the spirit of wind card here. You may be drawn, and we also have the spirit of the Fae, which is about uh, mischief and play and fantasy. And so I feel like there's a certain playfulness to you, but there's also a certain boredom to you. And you're kind of like, I'm not sure what to do. Saturn's in your fifth house. So it's like, you know, finding ways to have fun and do what you enjoy in a grown up mature way. You know what I mean? Which, yeah, sometimes that's not, <laughs> that's not fun all the time, right? So you're wanting some kind of change. And with Mercury in your fifth house, squaring Uranus in your eighth house, it may be tempting to kind of, you know, disrupt some things, instigate some things, shake some things up. But I don't think that's going to give you what you want because I think what you actually want and what is actually going to be fulfilling for you is to figure out why you're wanting to do that because you wanting to do that if you're wanting to do that is you actually running from something and is you not wanting to face something that's within you already so there could be some kind of fear or something that you've been reflecting on and it's kind of like i, I feel like you're really close to success and some of you may even be trying to sabotage it you know some of you may be like I don't know if this is what I want anymore or it is what you want, but you're scared. So you're trying to sabotage it, you know? And so I feel like this is a month where you could go a little bit too far or go a little bit too over the edge with something before you're even 100% sure on it, you know? And so that's what I would say is like a big lesson for you possibly this month that I'm seeing in your cards. Astrologically, though, there are just a lot of themes surrounding home and family and reflection on your relationships with home and family, the past, your parents and your living situation and what's going on there, um, possibly children if you're a parent, you know, and just the things that you, you may be feeling very busy, like there may be a lot that you have to do on a day to day basis, a lot of errands that you're running, a lot of meetings that you're having. You know, just all of those types of things. And Jupiter just moved into your sixth house. So it's very much a bringing up those things as well. Your schedules, your routines, your health. Where can you fit more time for healing and yourself and self-care into your life is a really, really big thing that's coming up right now for you, Libra. Um, this is a time where you need to fit some more creativity into your life. You need to learn more. You need to grow more in terms of your health, your self-care, your day-to-day -day maintenance, your lifestyle, etc. And this is a really wonderful time to do that where you can achieve a lot 
if you put if you do it you know and you can really uh, expand your horizons here so anyway so that's what i'm seeing in your card so astrologically mercury is going to go retrograde in aquarius your fifth house sector on the 14th and this is going to be a massive time of reflecting on your dating life your relationship with your children uh your what you do for fun love romance entertainment pleasure sexuality your creative energies like this is going to be a massive time of reflecting on those things that's going to come up on the 18th we have the nodes moving out of your third and ninth house and into your second and eighth house so there will be a really large theme around finances for the next 18 month cycle and i talked a lot about that in my 2022 sign horoscopes video you definitely want to go check that out if you haven't already we went over like all of the major big kind of broader themes that are coming for you in 2022 and then also we have mars moving into capricorn your fourth house as well on the 24th and that will just ramp up that energy and focus on home and family even more and I'm not going to lie to you, like Mars is exalted in Capricorn, so that's good. You're going to be really, really focused on something to do in your personal life, your home, your family, etc. You may be trying to build a new house or you may be really focused on doing something with your home or family around that time. But the thing is, and, and you're also going to be really focused on achieving your goals with your home and family, where you want to live, what you want to do, having like a more stable, solid family, etc., but also on the downside of that, you could notice some tension, arguments, conflicts, et cetera, in the area of home and family. And so, or you may need to stand up for yourself more in turn, because Mars is actually going to meet up with your ruling planet Venus in the fourth house. And so this may be a time where you are learning how to assert yourself more and with family, or you're learning how to take the lead more. You're learning how to, um, you know, really deal with things and manage things in a better way instead of maybe just like you know always kind of letting other people decide or dictate your decisions or whatever the case may be so that's something that you can notice after the 24th and even into february and then also on the 25th we will have mercury retrograding back into capricorn from aquarius which will also be your fourth house. So there's going to be, it's just going to keep building throughout the month where home and family themes are going to just become more and more of a focus for you. And then on the 29th, your ruling planet Venus will finally move direct after being retrograde since December. Uh, so there will finally be a forward momentum in the lessons you've been learning since Venus has been retrograde to do with home, family, your personal life, your private life, etc. So that is basically what I see for you, Libra, for January. Definitely let me know down below if this ended up resonating with you. I would really, really love to hear what you guys are going through, how you're feeling this energy, how you're noticing this energy, and if any of these messages were yours. Uh, I would really appreciate the feedback. It would also really help out this video if you comment down below, share it, like it, subscribe, all of that. So thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Scorpio? Welcome to your January 2022 tarot and astrology forecast for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing well. This will resonate most if you are a Scorpio rising. So Scorpio, this is a month, January is a month that is really focused on your environments, the people, places, things that you're around, places you go, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. You may be feeling very busy. We're very focused in on your goals in terms of what you want to build, the things that you want to do, your skill sets, and just really your interests, hobbies, etc. Now, another big theme that could be coming up for you is how that all relates to your home, your family, your private life, and your personal life, and also money and finances. We are wrapping up the last 18 month cycle of the nodes being in your second and eighth house. So you've learned a lot of lessons between your money and other people's money and asking for help versus relying on yourself and like just tons of lessons and finances. And I really see here that this month you're really wrapping up a lot of those lessons in really big ways, uh, at least in your cards. <laughs> um, I also really see you likely being a little bit too 
reckless or ruthless with money. Um, so I would just say, make sure that your priorities are straight. You know, this is not necessarily financial advice. I'm just saying, because we have the wheel of fortune and the four of pentacles. And so it's kind of like you're taking some kind of risk or you are feeling a little bit more risky uh, or you are possibly going through some kind of change regarding money, income, assets, etc. We also have the five of pentacles down here. And so even though I feel like you are definitely focused on future interest, future things that inspire you or make you passionate, which is really awesome. I also see you here possibly for some of you maybe going through some kind of financial change or dealing with some kind of insecurity around finances or some of you may already be going through a hard time financially. Uh, I don't think it's going to last very long though, but I do think that you're learning some kind of lesson financially in the month of January. And I see you really kind of and, and it's next to the hangman, which is kind of like a consequence. And so I'm just saying, if you're being very kind of risky with your money or you're taking some kind of risk with your money, it may, I don't know, I just, Venus is retrograde, okay? So I'm just saying, it may not turn out very great. Um, once again, it's your life, do what you want. I'm not trying to tell you what to do here, but um, it, only you can decide if that's worth it. And that's a big deal here, I think, because it really is about what is worth it and what isn't, right? And so I feel like you could get a little bit hung up or get kind of stuck in kind of a situation that you didn't want to be in if you're not careful financially here, okay? So I did want to tell you that really quick. But other than that, I do see new beginnings in relationships for you. For some of you, this could be a new beginning in a relationship or a revival of a certain relationship, feeling more connected or feeling like like a general sense of renewing in a relationship. For others of you, this could be a brand new relationship. Or for others of you, I could see like, and I feel like you would know this was you. I'm not saying this is going to come up and surprise you in January or anything. Like, I feel like some of you may have walked away from a relationship recently or maybe in the process of doing that um, to kind of explore, to kind of go into some kind of self-exploration. I also feel like others of you may be kind of battling something or feeling a little bit like outcasted or feeling a little bit like, like you're not like you're different in some way or feeling a little bit like you're not really like other people aren't agreeing with you or on your level or not really seeing what you're like what you're doing or, or something like that it's like you may feel kind of like an underdog for some reason in a certain situation and i'm not really getting much about what situation this is i kind of feel like it may be family or it may be your relationship for some of you but either way or it could be a financial situation for some of you you may be trying to pay off debts or people that you owe or something like that but i do think that you have the upper hand here with the seven of wands because that's usually what it is saying you know that it may not seem like you have the upper hand at the moment but you actually do the ball really is in your court just because it may seem like other people are um, not on the same page or something like that or the situation doesn't seem like it's on the same page as you it doesn't mean that you're not so so that's what i'm getting through the tarot i know that may not resonate with everybody this is a general reading but that's kind of what i'm just seeing in the tarot i'm also seeing scorpio that i think that this month you're going through a bit of an ascension. It's like you are realizing in certain areas where it's time to kind of ascend or transcend in some way. Uh, because we have Spirit of the Staircase, which is about ascension, progress, and the long way home. So for some of you, it, it's kind of like you're making progress, but it may not seem like that right away. It may seem like, um, like it's taking forever or like you're a little bit stuck or stagnant, but I, I really feel like eventually this month, I really feel like around this Cancer full moon on the 17th, you'll start maybe like feeling a certain amount of growth and progress. We also have the spirit of the rabbit, which is about fertility and sex and new beginnings. And that makes a lot of sense because Jupiter just moved into your fifth house. 
And so you could definitely be feeling a lot more playful, but you do want to be careful that you're not going overboard with that playful energy, like gambling or, you know, blowing your money on things that, <laughs> on things that like help you escape reality in some way. And then you're like, shit, what did I do? You know? So you do want to be careful of that energy this month. We also have the spirit of the crystal ball. Some of you guys could be getting into some kind of divination practice or uh, really getting into some kind of spiritual practice, something like that. And also, like I said, I do feel like you're really kind of working on goals or looking at your future, or trying to manage certain goals, trying to manage certain things in your life right now. Um, so that could be going with that as well. And then we also have spirit of the wolf, which is really about trusting your instincts and feeling like a loner which once again kind of goes with this seven of wands here. So I feel like this is a month where you need to trust your instincts, especially financially, possibly with certain people around you. Really just make sure that you have a backup plan just to be sure, you know, with Venus retrograde and then Mercury is going to retrograde this month on the 14th in your fourth house of home and family, your personal life, your private life. And then on the 25th, Mercury will actually retrograde back into your third house, which, like I said, deals with your environment, surroundings, transportation, people, places, and things that you kind of see on a day-to-day -day basis, what's going on in your local community or environment, uh, the places that you are going on a day-to-day -day basis, but also your skills, your, your own kind of goals and what you want to achieve, your interests, etc. So that is basically what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio, with your cards. Um, other than that, the nodes are finally moving out of your sign, or not your sign, sorry, your second house and your eighth house this month. And they're moving into your sign and your opposite sign of Taurus. And so this will be a massive time of personal transformation, of dealing with like, lessons and who you are and like yourself and how you feel about yourself and addressing anything going on there, learning lessons with yourself and your identity, but also learning a lot of lessons in terms of your relationships and other people, your commitments and what you value um, in terms of those things. And so that's going to be starting on the 18th and for the next 18 months afterwards. On the 24th, Mars will move into your third house where you may be feeling more active. You may be feeling more focused on something, on a project or doing something in your local environment or, uh, you know, doing something that you're interested in or that you're passionate about, learning a new skill or something like that around that time. You may be a lot more busy, like running errands and doing stuff like that. Uh, and then on the 29th, Venus finally goes direct and will no longer be retrograde. And that is where there will be a forward momentum in the lessons that you've learned with Venus retrograde over like the last month, a little over a month. Yeah, so that is what I'm seeing for you for the month of January, Scorpio. Definitely let me know down below if any of these messages resonated with you um, so far, at least. And if not, then what you are noticing coming up in your life, because as always, I love feedback and I love to hear what is going on with you guys and what you're experiencing. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, truly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up Sagittarius? Welcome back and let's go ahead and get into your January 2022 tarot and astrology reading. So Sag, you are wrapping up a lot of massive karmic lessons to do with yourself, your identity, your appearance, your body, and all of these massive lessons you've been learning with the south node in your sign. How you can maybe sometimes result into karmic behaviors or patterns regarding who you are and your identity. And also how you relate with others, your relationships and all of that, like all of those themes of self and other have been going through a massive, massive uh, growing and changing uh, energy over like the last 18 months since May 2020. And I see that here in your cards too. And you're finally wrapping those things up. You're finally getting to a place where it's like, okay, like you're being able to integrate these lessons of self and other. And Mars is in your sign for, you know, it's been in your sign the last several weeks, but um, it will be in your sign for 
most of January uh, still. And so you're probably feeling fiery and passionate and assertive and, you know, more focused and like more motivated, um, but also possibly a little bit more confrontational or getting into debates a little bit more. But yeah, I just see that you're really kind of honing in on like, other people's opinions, other people's sides, other people's thoughts, other people, like what other people experience. And that's really the lesson of the North Node being in your seventh house. You know, it's not just about your opinions and your views and your beliefs, but it's also about what other people are going through or what other people think. And it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to have new perceptions and different information coming in. And it's okay to listen to your partner or listen to significant people in, in your life and what they have to say. And if you haven't been doing that, um, then yeah, that's, <laughs> you may have been having like a difficult time or you may have had a lot of relationships kind of not work out over the last 18 months. You know, it's been a time where you've really been like, kind of pushed out of your comfort zone and where you've had to understand other people and where other people are coming from a little bit more. And I really see that in your cards here. I also really see that there is a lot of communication being had in relationships and there's a lot coming up in terms of, you know, what is important in relationships and a lot of like mental aspects and relationships, how you mentally perceive and view relationships, etc. And I also feel like January for you, Sag, is very much also about finances. You have Venus retrograding through your second house of money, resources, finance. And so assets, priorities, like what you own, what's of value to you, what you, your, your relationship with the material and what you need and your resources. And so all of these things are really being reflected on during this time and still through most of January, where you may be getting a little bit more reorganized with your money, with your finances, with your resources. You may be rethinking things, rethinking what's of value to you, rethinking what's a priority to you, rethinking your relationship with some of the things that you think you need in your life. And so it could be a time where you're really seeing that in January. And, you know, we're going to have a Cancer full moon around the 17th of January, and that's going to be in your eighth house. And that's going to be a time where you could be kind of letting go of certain emotional attachments. And it could also bring up other people's money and investments, other, other financial obligations as well around that time. But let's go ahead and get into the rest of your cards here first. So we have the King of Wands and the Strength card. And I really see this as you getting more solid on who you are as a person and feeling a little bit more in your power, feeling a little bit more confident in yourself, feeling a little bit more assertive with Mars in your sign and just really like learning when to assert yourself and maybe when to take a step back when to use your willpower and when to take a step back. You know, like it's it's definitely a time where you've had to exhibit a lot of courage and strength over this last massive 18 month cycle and where you've learned a lot about yourself through it, I feel here. And so um, another card that we have, we have the spirit of the draft, which is about perception, foresight and advantage. And so I feel like this could be coming in for you in the month of January where like I was saying before, your perception, if there, I feel like there may be certain significant relations or relationships in your life that may be mirroring what's going on because we also have the balance of the scales here, the spirit of the scales, which is about karma, justice, and balance. And so you're ending a massive karmic time. You're seeing how your perception really drives a lot of stuff. Sorry, my cat. <laughs> your perception really drives like a lot of stuff that ends up happening. And I also feel like you need to be careful this month. This is coming up for a lot of people because we have the Spirit of Elixirs card, which is about intoxication, uninhibited, shameless. So you want to be careful that you're not getting too driven by something that maybe somewhat of a fantasy or maybe somewhat delusional or maybe like intoxicating. Like there could be something coming up here where you're like needing to maybe you're feeling a little bit reckless lately or maybe you're feeling like intoxicated or or drawn in by something and i would say you want to watch out for that because your perception may not be clear on that or you may already know like you may already know what's up you may already see it like have the foresight to say yeah this is not a good idea you know 
So that's important to definitely watch out for. And then we also have a spirit of the pinnacle, which is about faith, unity, and wholeness. But as it has, you know, as it is a pinnacle, I would also say money, finances, etc., as well. So other than that, we have the Six of Swords and the Ace of Wands, and I'm just like getting the word adventure. It's like you are, you're leaving something behind for something new, I feel this month, or you are finally getting out of a rough or chaotic situation and you're feeling more inspired. You are feeling more inspired, but you want to be careful that you don't overdo it <laughs> because you could go from the Ace of Wands to the Ten of Wands really quick. You know, you're really learning about, I think, like energy management maybe with Mars in your first house, like where to put your energy and like how much energy, like you don't want to exhaust your energy. You don't want to exhaust your vitality. And that's another lesson you could be learning in January with Mars in your sign where are you maybe overdoing something, you know, just for the sake of because you're motivated and passionate about it, which is great, but you have to learn how to balance out your energy. You know what I mean? You don't want to overdo something. So that is what I'm seeing in your card, Sag. So as for your astrology, uh, we have Mercury going retrograde on the 14th in your second house. Or no, I'm sorry, your third house, but it will retrograde back into your second house. Of your third house of communication, siblings, relatives, neighbors, community, your city, town, your local environment, etc. Also transportation and um, the places, people and things that you kind of visit or see or interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. So you could see kind of a reflection on those themes coming up. I know Mercury retrograde in my third house was definitely like a reflection period on like the people, places, and things in my life. And so that could be something that you see coming up around that time. Um, and then it will retrograde back into your second house on the 25th of January into Capricorn. And that will be more of a time of a reflection period on finances. It won't stay retrograde in your second for very long, maybe like a week or so. Um, but it will be a time where you're kind of like rethinking uh, your finances, but you're also kind of making logical sense of lessons you've already learned there with the Venus retrograde and like what what's worth it to you, your priorities and just getting more organized in that area. And then uh, we have the nodes finally moving, like I said, out of your sign and your opposite sign of Gemini and into your 12th and 6th house. And I went into a lot of detail about that. That's really, really important uh, in your 2022 year ahead horoscopes video. So I did one video, I did all the signs in one video. So go check that out uh, for your Sag rising horoscope for the year ahead, uh, where I talked about the nodes in your sixth and 12th house of health, daily routine, and then also like subconscious, ha subconscious habits. Um, those are themes just to keep it very basic for right now. Those are things that you're going to see come up with the nodes moving into your sixth and 12th house. So we also have, um, Mars moving into Capricorn on the 24th, your second house. So it will move out of your sign and into your second. And that will be a time of where you're really intensely focused on money and finances, where you're really focused on your priorities and your relationship with the material world, what you want to gain, what you want to do, your goals with finances and money, like it's going to be on, you know, it's like time to take action, right? Venus will finally go direct on January 29th and will be done retrograding. So that will bring kind of like a forward momentum uh, finally to that second house of money, resources, finances, and you'll start really kind of wrapping up something there with Venus going direct. So Anyway, so that is what I'm seeing for you for January, Sagittarius. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully it gave you some messages that you needed to hear or that resonated. Definitely let me know down below if it did or what you are noticing coming up in your life uh, so far in January. Uh, so thank you guys so, so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate your support. And that concludes this video. I will see you guys in the next one.